Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of the Two and a Half Cents podcast. And I'm being joined by Bradley, aka Sergeant, as well as Chris, aka CGM. What's up? As well, for our very first time on this podcast, our very first guest, none other than Purple Swordfish, aka Alex. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. Dabar, how are you? Doing pretty well. Um, you know, anytime I'm in a voice chat with Chris, you know, that's a question that always needs to be asked. But I, fortunately, tonight I'm doing all right. Um, Chris, if you guys are listening from home, uh, got a new mic. And you might notice that if his voice is a little bit crispier than usual. Uh, and in genuine Chris fashion, he ends up breaking it the day he gets it. Uh, so he's on his second brand new mic in three days. How'd you pull that off, Chris? The stupid ass uh, prong broke off in my headphone jack in my computer. There was a problem. What it means is there's a problem between the chair and the keyboard. Wrong. And and did and didn't I quote? Didn't I write you a quote that you were going to basically say exactly that earlier in uh, on the DM? I, I don't quoted, know. Did you? And it was almost verbatim to what you said. Pretty much. I gotta look. No, he did. He posted it in my personal DM. Oh. But, I mean, it's true. You're you're the least coordinated person I think I've ever come across. And for you to break the headphone jack inside your computer. Uh, oh, it, and now I only get audio out of my left ear, by the way. So I'm pissed off about that. That's great. It could be the mic. <laughs> like on the very like side of the mic, it might just have like a little tiny. No, I've tried three it. pairs of headphones. Are you sure? Like it doesn't say on the, the side, like official mic of the Washington Redskins. You know, just like oh! <laughs> nicely done. Well, no, because his headset lasted longer than RG3's career. Oh, ouch. Oh, that was a bust of a pick. <laughs> it know, wouldn't he's... have been if you guys wouldn't have, you know, beat the hell out of the guy. He's pretty good and... at doing those subway commercials. <laughs> and it wasn't just one pick either. Like the Redskins traded. A ton of picks to take that one pick that ended up being a bust. Well, I always blame Mike Shanahan for not benching him in that playoff game against Seattle when we were up fourteen to nothing because he couldn't do a damn thing after that, and we would have won the game if Cousins had come in. It's a shame, man. I really liked RG three. Like that rookie year was a lot of fun to watch. It's just everything after that was just unfortunate. Yeah. Speaking of bad coaching decisions, Raven, do you ever look back on last year's playoffs and think? They should have put Flacco in. Um, it, it's you know they say retrospect is twenty twenty. Um, it's hard to say. Um, oh, we were both tweeting about that during that game. Yeah, Flacco's on the sideline with his helmet on, ready to go. I and will say it, it was kind of difficult to watch Lamar Jackson lose the ball for the fourth or fifth time for the game, and Flacco still not being put in the game. But it's one of those things. It's the changing of the guard. Um. Baltimore was sending a strong message that we are done with Flacco. It's Lamar Jackson from here on out. So I, I get why they did it. Um, uh, I feel like we would be uh, um, not doing oh. our guest uh, justice without mentioning the fact that we were supposed to be recording this podcast last week. Uh, however, uh, Chris, of course, had technical difficulties and... Um, was not able to have a functioning microphone. So, again, I want to say thank you to Alex for taking the time two weeks in a row out of his schedule to be here for the podcast. Uh, definitely appreciate you for that. Um, we try to record these podcasts every week. Uh, sometimes we things happen, we have to take a break. I think two last week we took a break because I was in Chicago. Uh, we weren't able to record, so... No, last week we took a break because Chris's mic wasn't working. I'm sorry. We're like, week... nope, I'm not editing this. I'm done. <laughs> the week prior, I was in Chicago. Um, and I must say, you know, being a guy that flies home once or twice a year, uh, I've had my fair share of bad flights. And those of you guys who travel, you know, I'm sure you guys have your fair share of bad flights. But this flight that I took from Chicago to Vegas was easily, hands down, the worst flight I've ever taken. Um, I don't want to come off as snooty and be like, oh, you know, it's not, it's all about the brand of penis that we're served. It's got nothing to do. What's up? Too late. 
I know, right? It's got nothing to do with that. And I hate to be that guy that complains about something uh, such as that. Because what's the alternative to flying? Driving, right? So I was blessed enough to be able to get a flight. But if you give I mean, me... A, you could take a bus or a train. You could. You could. I mean, Alex, have you ever had any like super bad flights? I've had a couple rough ones. But you're right. The alternative is usually driving. Which... Right usually isn't very practical and then i've been shocked recently like i enjoy trains like i've always wanted to ride on a train on a long trip but uh, they're actually way more expensive than a flight even though you don't get there in nearly the amount of time so like it it's not really economically feasible to take a train anymore yeah no i agree with you i was actually looking into that because that's actually a popular thing that people are doing now uh and what is normally a hundred fifty dollar flight is like a four hundred and fifty dollar uh uh train ride and but i gotta say the things that they give you are pretty cool but is it worth four hundred dollars i'd be it also interested. takes forever because you have to make every stop yeah that's true i mean there's the guys on youtube that that have the is it worth it show where they test out different types of mac and cheese and things like that i want to see if they do the is it worth it for train travel um because it, it looks cool they give you like three meals a day and uh there's a bathroom you get your own desk it's, it's got a bedroom i mean it's pretty cool it's got a nice setup this is rainy raven sponsored by amtrak yeah i'll just i'll take the death tube in the air at thirty thousand <laughs> feet with the people that all have the flu and they're hacking up along, and then there's a screaming baby on one side of me, and a fat guy who, by the way, I'm a fat guy, but like an even fatter guy next to me falling yeah. asleep, drooling so on leave my us shoulder. Fat guys that, then, takes an, that takes an hour. Yeah. If yeah. you if you're in more than one seat, you should pay for more than one seat and have the one and three quarter seats. I've thought that for years. Yeah. They but, do make you pay for more than one seat if you can't fit in the seat. Yeah, they're uh, pretty strict about that now. Like if you're like because I know a couple guys who are very big and they've been told like you have to buy two if you're in coach. I've never I've heard of it, that being a thing, but I've never known anybody who's had to have paid for uh, two seats. Um, but yeah, that's um, I don't know. That's really touchy ground. Uh, I, I can see how someone could find that offensive or unfair or unjust. <laughs> But hey, you know what? You're big enough, and you, technically you do have to use two seats to spit in. So yeah, you pay for two tickets. But I, I wish that was the uh, my problem I had on this flight. I wish I was sitting next to some fat guy, um, and that was the end of it. But this flight was literally the worst. Um, I hope that you guys never, ever, ever have to go through what I did. Uh, so... I go to the airport, which is O'Hare, for those of you guys who don't know, in Chicago. That's where I'm flying out of. And the flight is overbooked. When I, At the time of me checking in, I'm like, first of all, how do you overbook a flight? I mean, you know how many seats are on a flight. You know how many butts are going to be in it. How do, you, how do you overbook that? I guess they count on people not showing up for their flight so they can sell that seat to somebody else. Yeah, I have, <laughs> I have no idea how that works. Then... They changed my seat from 15C <laughs> to 35C. So, like, the window seat is A, right? The the middle seat is B, and the aisle seat is C. So I went from 15C to 35C. Um, I get an aisle seat, which is great. As I pull up, and uh, I'm looking down the aisle, it's like, okay, there's one guy there, and he's sitting at 35... Um, he's sitting at 35... A. So he's sitting right at the window. There's an empty seat between us, and I get the aisle seat. So from the very start, I knew this was going to be a train wreck. Um, I hear two ethnic ladies behind me screaming and talking very loudly. There's babies crying all around me, people sneezing. Uh, there's a kid playing on either a Game Boy or a tablet. <laughs> and the game is on full volume and it's the same annoying repetitive sound effects anyway i'm looking down the aisle of the other uh, gremlins that are also boarding the plane and people are starting to stow their luggage up top i'm like all right i wonder who's going to sit next to me in between uh uh be between me and this guy that's sitting at the window 
So there's about seven or eight people lined up getting ready. And I see this absolute nine out of 10 bombshell of a woman walking down the aisle. And she stops just short of 35. She's like, oh, is this 35? I'm like, yes, it is. So I get up and I help her out with her luggage. And uh, no sooner than her sitting down at 35B right next to me, this guy at the window, he's like, hey, do you mind switching seats with my wife? And I, I'm thinking to myself, like, please say, like, please say no, don't switch. Um, but she ended up switching. And this lady was an absolute train wreck um, that ended up sitting next to me. <laughs> I thought everything was going so well so far and this lady sat down next to me debt. oh my goodness oh my goodness dude she, she... So, so, the, so the kind young woman obliges ends up uh, switching seats with his wife his wife comes and sits down and literally from the moment she starts sitting down she, horrible hygiene is what I'm noticing uh, she's sneezing into her open palm and then touching things coughing without covering her mouth uh, carrying on a really loud, what seemed like two hour conversation, uh, and to me sounded like more like an argument. Um, meanwhile, the two ethnic ladies behind me were still arguing, the baby was still crying, and the kid was still playing on his loud video game. <sighs> and, it, and this is all before takeoff? This is all before, t I mean, yeah, this is all before takeoff. And those of you guys who know me, know me as like pretty, pretty foundational, conservative, uh, pro-lifer. Okay, and I know Planned Parenthood gets a lot of flack. Believe me, I, I see it from my end. I know Planned Parenthood, Planned Parenthood gets a lot of flack. However, I'm, I'm very pro-life and I believe life is a gift from God. At the end of this flight, I was ready to be a Planned Parenthood ambassador with how many <laughs> screaming and crying babies I had to listen to on this flight. An hour into the flight, the stewardess comes down the aisle taking food orders. And wouldn't you know, the lady sitting at 35B right next to me, she orders the egg salad with hummus. Guys, I'm telling you, my stomach was churning. I did my best to remain collected and reserved, but this lady, she was sneezing, she, she was some kind of sick, and she now at this point she smells like 50 shades of hummus. <laughs> I plug in my earbuds and pull up one of the D-tier movies that's available on the flight. I'm, I'm trying my best to avoid remembering or realizing that I'm in the middle of the situation. After landing, I deboarded. I ended up waiting for uh, the lady down the tunnel. Um, I was like tying my shoe, kind of waiting for her to deboard as well. And I, uh, I asked her, I asked her briefly of this horror show of a flight that we were on. And I ended up being bold and asked her for a number. I got her number. However, you wouldn't believe it. She said, I'm sorry, I'm only in Vegas for 40 minutes. This is a connecting flight to Hawaii. So I'm telling you guys, <laughs> this, this flight was a house of horrors. Nothing, nothing went well at all. It was a complete L from the start. And I'm sorry well, for going a, on that tirade. You got a phone number. I got a phone number. Well, what am I going to do? Is go to Hawaii? Does she live in Hawaii? Sure to stop in Vegas for a while. I don't know, dude. I'm I'm sorry for taking over podcasts like that. But I just have to get over my chest, like how bad of a flight that was. I mean, if you're talking about bad flights, I'm gonna have to exempt myself from that conversation. Why is that? Because most of my bad flight stories are involving military. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not all about getting shot at in the air or anything. It's just. I see the military. They they go by the, the lowest bidder, basically. So one thing I wanted to kind of touch on uh, today, by the way, at the time of us recording is uh, June 24th. I tweeted out today that I officially uninstalled Madden and Alex, aka Purple Swordfish, also said he did the same thing. Uh, Madden 20 kind of spoiled the experience. Uh, Alex, can you delve into that a little bit? What about Madden 20 or being able to play the Madden 20 beta uh, kind of made madden 19 uh obsolete for you so i gotta give ea credit like they fixed a lot of the things that were wrong mm -hmm. with madden 19 like two of my biggest issues with the game might seem like minor issues to some people but 
for me, they were issues that just, as someone who put over a thousand hours into the game last year, they really uh, got on my nerves. One uh, was receivers running their routes out of bounds. Mm -hmm. And then when they would come back on that route, uh, they would obviously be subject to an illegal touching penalty that was fixed. And then the, the juke animations last year in the open field, if you got close to the numbers in the open field as an open ball carrier, mm -hmm. uh, the juke move was just way overpowered. You could easily get caught into an animation. That was definitely fixed in, in the Madden 20 footage that, or not footage, the gameplay that I was able to get out yeah. of the beta. And um, the run game felt incredibly realistic like it agreed i think you compared it to madden 07 yep which it really when you said that i was like you know what i remember madden 07 and i remember <laughs> being like this and you're right it, it it really felt like that and um you can't just you know spam the sprint button go right into a pile like you're just gonna end up with one yard so after that Going to Madden 19, it just felt like a step backward. I, exactly. I, I just I can't Wait. find I, I can't find any joy in playing it anymore. I, I, is it the same way for you? It is the same way for me. Um, I think of of us all. I think just you and I. I don't think Chris or Sarge got a chance to play the beta, unfortunately. But nope. Um, no, after I, you tried to troll me, by the way, with the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll Chris get into that. But but. You failed miserably. I did not as, fail. Yes, you failed. You failed. He tried to uh, have everybody on Twitter DM me for a beta code, which I didn't have. <laughs> and he failed because I had my DMs closed. So joke's on oh, you. Man. Joke's on you. Go choke on the burger with the uh, Indian scammers. Whatever. <laughs> oh, jeez. I will say... Um... Madden 20 it did. I have to piggyback on what you just said. It, it does feel a lot better. Uh, the running mechanics look, feel a lot smoother. I went on the EA forums uh, to kind of post my suggestions. I had a uh, clipboard out the entire time, the entire three days I played the game. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and write down the good and the bad. And I'm going to Why go am I not surprised? I'm going to go into the forums, the EA support forums or whatever it was. <laughs> And I was really, really happy to see that I'd never have to start off a new topic. Every issue that I had, someone already came up with it. So it's good to see that other people are of the same mindset. Um, people complaining about the pass rush being too effective. I happen to think that it's perfect the way it is. Um, did you have any difficulties with that or no? I posted about today and, of course, I got a mole tweet immediately back well saying, here's like, the I thing want... about madden right well no i and i love mole by the way like i do too he's my bro to, he's, he's great and like there couldn't be a better ambassador for the game but he did tweet me and he's like i, I would like details on what you're talking about and i tried to give him the best details i could but i don't have the game in front of me so i don't really remember everything it's mm -hmm. kind of it's kind of like foggy for me but uh, the, pass, the pass rush is a little op specifically when like it, it, for example, uh, Cameron Jordan has a power up ability, or well, not power up ability, superstar X ability, whatever they're calling it this year. Yes. He gets three sacks. X and factor. like, I'm talking about this guy. When he gets three sacks, I feel bad for my opponent. Okay. <laughs> Cause I'm running a Tampa two uh, out of uh, big nickel uh, over G. And I, the guy couldn't beat cover two. Like, he, he just didn't know how to beat it. So he was holding on to the ball too long, and Cameron Jordan is just racking up sacks. He gets his third, and then he gets that superstar X ability where he gets like almost instant block sheds. The guy ended up taking a safety and quitting. So it, it feels like I'm the guy who benefited from it, and I was like, that's but, just really But you felt bad for him on his behalf. I, I felt bad because, you know, I've been on the other end of that, and like it kind of – the the reason I'm a little concerned about the pass rush is – Typically, at the beginning of the year, especially in Madden Ultimate Team, there are no good right tackles in the game. So guys like J.J. Watt, Cameron Jordan, you know, they eat really well early on in the year. 
and they can be really OP. So you know, I never really thought could, of that until you just mentioned it. Because I'm not really a mutt guy, and I know you are. Um, yeah, unfortunately, that's that's, um, that's going to be something interesting to handle. I don't know how uh, they're going to mediate that situation. But yeah. yeah, you're right. Usually, the the offensive linemen are not as great at the, uh, as the uh, defensive linemen or defensive ends. It's funny though because everybody's blowing praises at Madden 20, but everybody was blowing praises at Madden 19 when the beta was out too. That's well, to true. Be fair, yeah, Madden 19 everybody beta. was talking about how great Madden 19 was over Madden 18, and then everybody hated Madden 19. Okay, but here's the thing: yes or no. Correct or, or incorrect, Madden 19 beta was a lot better than Madden 18. Well, I mean, I'll, Madden 18 is a pretty low bar. So I guess yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll go out with double R on this one and, and say that, like, as much as I liked Madden 18, you know, I feel like Madden 19 was an improvement. I think where Madden 19 got kind of bad was there were a lot of glitches that started getting discovered when the game officially dropped. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, you know, that happens with some... all of them, though. I Yeah, but, you know, here's the here's You're the always going to have people posting videos on money plays that are going to get your touchdowns every time. You're right. Here's the difference. Madden 19, if I'm not mistaken, was their first one on the Frostbite engine, and they clearly struggled with patching glitchy plays or... Things that broke the game or exploits, what have Absolutely. you. Absolutely. So, for example, the scumbag kick that I bemoaned for months <laughs> on my channel lasted from August all the way until early November. You know, in previous years, that would have been fixed within a month. Oh, yeah. This past year, it took three. There were things when I put Madden 19 down, the glitches, exploits, etc., that were still you know in play so i think that's kind of where the problem with madden 19 came in what i've always said from the jump though is madden 15 was good madden 16 was better 17 was better than 16 they get better each year i just don't think it's the the huge jump that people are looking for right still i was really impressed with madden 20's beta that's why i used to buy them like every other year it's not a bad strategy (laughs) <laughs> I used to get them every other year, but now it's like, I don't know. I'm having more fun playing football games than I did when I was in the army. Reference, um, a reference the Frostbite technology. Um, I, I have to agree that it, it is a learning curve for them. Madden 19 was a huge learning curve um, for the Madden team for as far as like transitioning over to the, um, to the Frostbite engine because... Everyone knows about the Madden 19 spinning rotisserie leg video. Everyone knows yep. about the uh, Le'Veon Bell halfback draw snap where he ends up teleporting 60 yards downfield. Um, ridiculous interceptions that uh, cause the ball to, or not interceptions, but like quarterbacks throwing a ball for a, a net total of minus 40 yards or something like that. So. I knew there's going to be a little bit of a learning curve, and um, I'm hoping now that it's their second year with Frostbite that they can kind of tweak a lot of those issues and uh, make up for a more streamlined game. Well, here's my the only problem I have from what I've heard about Madden 20 mm-hmm. is this new power up thing that's what we were just I mean, talking about the X Factor. Yeah, talking but, about like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, but my problem is is once you get into the zone or whatever the hell they're calling it, it's going to make the stats so unrealistic for a NFL sim game. Like, I think well, Zeke's... Really, though, because, I mean, if, if you think about it, like, as a Steelers fan, when, when Antonio Brown... Oh, there, was a, there was a game, Steelers in Kansas City. Antonio Brown scored two back-to-back touchdowns on two plays. I remember that. <laughs> Yeah, that but how had, many? That guy had a reception rating of like ninety three percent in that game. He was on fire. When a player gets on fire, they get riled up, and it's just they go nuts. No, like I get it. But Calvin how many Johnson games? Nineteen hundred yards in the season. How many games is somebody really going to have three sacks in? And then once you get the third, you're going to wind up with like six, and that's just like maybe twice a season. 
is in somebody gets six sacks. That's my only Alex, do you think criticism it's of it. This new X Factor thing, or do you think uh, it can be reined in a little bit? So there's passive abilities, and if you want to talk about those being overpowered, you know maybe we have a discussion there. As far as the ones that are the like the superstar X abilities, where you have to meet a qualifier, yeah, I know when you look at them on paper, you go, "Oh, that would be really easy." It's not like. You have to keep in mind you're playing maybe in franchise. I don't know if you're playing a computer, but when you're playing another human being, they're going to know I need to stop this guy from hitting that qualifier. Oh yeah. So like it, it becomes this chess match of sorts. Like I have to stop Cameron Jordan on the edge. So I was literally shifting my blocking. I was keeping my running back in as a blocker. Even like on offense, Drew Brees, right? He has one where you have to complete five passes in a row and you're just sitting there and you're like, I have to get an incompletion from him. You know, like it right. becomes a chess match and I kind of like that. I had the same reservations Chris did though. Before I played it, I, I yeah. was seen the same exact thing that Chris was saying. Because by the other one I think I heard on their stream was – it, you have for Zeke, you have to get uh, four rushes of 20 plus yards. And I'm sitting there thinking, okay, that's eight, that's 80 yards already. And once you get him in the zone, he's going to rush for like 250, 300. And I'm like, people don't rush for that much. Unless they're playing against the Redskins. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> well, we brought back. Uh, uh, Jack Wagon Joe Barry. So I, I think we're going to be in for another miserable season. You know what's going to make Madden 20 great is when they release the mud card for Bigfoot. Oh my God. I would love that. That'd be sick. They <laughs> they should totally do that. I, I want a polar bear defensive tackle. <laughs> he's going he's gonna to have a X factor where he just says Sasquatch over his name. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so cool. I'm totally down for that. When I was in uh, high school, my brother uh, was never a sports fan, but he uh, did a create a player on my uh, Mad. I think it was oh six or oh five. Uh, no, oh four or oh five, and he created a three hundred pound tight end with like uh, ninety nine catching, but he put his injury at like zero, so he get like a touchdown and then hurt himself. Free What's time the fun in that? <laughs> that, that's, what, that's that's like I like playing. I like playing to a franchise as a player from like their rookie year up. You try to progress them. Yeah, that just seems like fun. more fun to me. It seems like more of a challenge because, like the older, I think it was 2016 when you did that. You didn't call the plays. The coach called the plays. So if you played a wide receiver, you may not get thrown to in a game. Yeah, that's true. That's that's the way it works in the NFL too. That's why you have people like Antonio Brown and OBJ throwing things and kicking field goal nets <laughs> on the sidelines. Well, the, the only way I would ever play to create a player was uh, if I was the quarterback because the coach, it would be like third and uh, nine, and sometimes they'd call a run play, and I'm like, what the hell are we running for? Well, they changed that with like 17, I think, where now – if even if you're like playing a running back, you still call the plays. Yeah, which makes it really easy to make your player ridiculously good because if you're playing as a running back, you can do an entire, you can do all of your games doing nothing but run plays. Yeah, I just uh, we're coming up on probably one of the most. I mean, second to Christmas week, obviously for me. I love Christmas; it's my favorite holiday, but. We're coming up on one of the most exciting times of the year. We're talking about, um, you know, preseason NFL. We got Madden coming out. Um, NHL you know, twenty. NHL twenty. Uh, Alex, I don't. Know, you weren't there last night, but we, the three of us, kind of went through and gave our wish list for like the remaining um, releases that coming out this year. And I think the common titles we all came across was Madden. Um, NHL and Doom. Doom. Yeah. And uh, Sinking City. 
Well, Sinking City is a game I just learned about last night. It looks really cool. Oh, man, that game um, sick. Are there any other games you're thinking about picking up this year? Uh, not just to stream, but just to play offline? Well, generally, if I'm not streaming and I really don't play it offline, it just nowadays it's so hard to find the time. But uh, Madden, obviously, is one of them. Doom, I mean, how could I've been playing Doom since I was a kid <laughs> and I, I like on the PC, I didn't even have a PC that could play it, but I had friends, you know, so I would play it there. Uh, I even played the really it was actually pretty good. Uh, the Super NES port for Doom was OK. Uh, so obviously Doom, and then there's the new Wolfenstein coming out. That looks really cool. And Super Mario Maker's coming out this week. I can't wait for that, Super Mario Maker 2. Nice. And then uh, Psychonauts 2. Psychonauts 2 is something that I've been looking forward to for a very long time. That first game came out in 05, if I'm, yeah, 05. And I've been looking forward to a sequel, and it's going to finally happen, so... Yeah, there's there's a lot of good stuff coming out this year, man. As a Nintendo owner, does it kind of bother you that you're not able to um, have the rights to stream Nintendo games? You oh, can still gone, stream man. Nintendo games. No, that's the, Double R. They they got rid of that, bro. Like they finally smartened up, listened to the fans, and so you, you can stream it now. I, I was mean, streaming. They... I streamed uh, Shadowgate a few weeks, a few months ago. Yeah, they loosened up the restrictions, and I streamed uh, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. I think that's what they call it. Whatever the one is on the Switch, it's great. By the way, go out and buy it. It's got a great character list. But I, I streamed Super Smash Brothers, and they didn't copyright claim it. And then when I, I was like talking about it on my stream, and it was like, uh, yeah, it's gone. So I went and I, I looked it up, and they got rid of it. Wow, it just makes sense, man. Like. Streaming a game, in my opinion, is it's free publicity. Like free, it's kind of free publicity unless you're doing something like, hey, everyone, look at how crappy this game is. I get like maybe copyright claiming that, right? But even yeah. then, I feel like that even falls under fair use because it is a critique of the game in a, in a way. It's just like a really douchey version of a critique. Mm hmm. But yeah, like Nintendo, they finally smartened up and realized because they were claiming and taking down the first Super Mario Maker. They were taking those videos down and it just made no sense because you're like, people would buy the game watching this video. Like I knew somebody who made a bunch of those videos that got taken down and they were part of the reason why I bought the first game. Wow. Yeah, that's... uh this is new news to me. I, I had no idea. I thought that that was still Ooh. on. The streaming ban was on. Uh, last I heard, you have to be like an official Nintendo affiliate or someone approved by them to be able to stream their games on their console. Um, but this is this is awesome. That's that's great news that people are able to stream this now. Um, oh, you streamed your Nintendo uh, knockoff game last night. That that was <laughs> Cat Mario or whatever that was. That's not Nintendo. Uh, but yes, <laughs> I did get copyright strike for the background music because while it was Cat Mario, they still played the original Mario music in the background. So I did get claimed for that. I've been getting some really, I don't know if you have Double R. I, I assume you have because you have a lot of videos up there on YouTube. I found a lot of my older videos, like I'm talking about three or four years old, have been getting some really bogus copyright claims. Like from no name companies that have no mm -hmm. right whatsoever. And they're not even doing like claim on the music. They're doing oh, yeah. claim on the visual. And I'm like, oh, really? My, yeah, like my ugly face is in the lower right hand <laughs> corner of the screen. You do not have a copyright for my face. Like you do not have a visual claim to that, but they, they will do it. Like it's, it's a thing that's going around right now. Yeah, I, I've had a similar phenomenon happen to me. Uh, part of the reason why I stopped playing as much music on my streams is because uh, I had a bunch of my 2016, you know, arguably the year my channel was in its prime. I had a bunch of my 2016 streams taken down because if you guys remember back then, uh, I'd play a lot of like um, rap music on my stream, but it was all no copyright. So it wasn't claimed. Uh, the description of the music I got it from said it's free to use. Well, what had happened at some point during those couple of years since 2016, 
the owner of the music ended up selling the beat to some like no name rapper. The rapper used it, produced an album, and now I'm in one fell swoop. Any stream that has that particular beat in it claimed. I always so, wonder if that would happen. Yeah, so you have to watch out for these free, quote unquote, free beats or whatever it is, because if they sell it to some uh, producer, music producer, and they end up producing an actual uh, song out of it, then whatever that song is in on your channel can be claimed. And that's what happened to me. I know it's going to happen to me. Eventually, little Jamesy's going to realize <laughs> that I've been playing his music on my stream. <laughs> Rex on Rex. <laughs> racks. Somehow I think you're okay with little, ja little Jamesy. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna do a copyright claim. Just Set like I'm I'm sure somebody like uh that that one fella who Double R has the rivalry with where he runs around taking down his signs, I'm pretty sure he could do a visual claim like that's my sign in his oh live stream that he took down in front of the McDonald's. I'm copyright claiming this video. <laughs> Dude, that guy's such a jerk. <laughs> I still see. I, I don't. I stopped taking them down. By the way, I still see him up. I kind of feel bad for him, um, if he's that desperate for views. Um, but yeah. Why? Don't don't take it. Don't be. Don't feel bad. Do I don't know. I appreciate the hustle, but from a civic standpoint, yeah. A civic standpoint, I hate that it's borderline littering. Okay, so let's give some background to people listening because uh, not everyone follows me on Twitter or knows exactly what we're talking about. Real quick, we're talking about this guy that lives in the Vegas area, very close to where I live, apparently. Um, I initially came across one of his signs when I was grabbing like an ice cream from uh, McDonald's, and I saw his sign hanging right in the McDonald's drive through and says, subscribe to a blank, blank, blank channel. Um, so I'm like, you know what? I'm going to YouTube him. I'm going to search him. And look, the sign's actually working. It's doing its job because it's got me <laughs> looking him up. And, uh, you know, he's people in his chat, in his comments are like, hey, I saw your sign at the gas station or whatever. I'm like, dude, that's not how you get generate views on YouTube. You have to do it the hard way. Like, it, you can't. People are pumping gas. They don't care about whatever rap music. And yes, he's peddling his rap music so i'm like <laughs> um so i took the sign down and i ended up seeing it at another gas station and i typed in this comment section i'm like dude no disrespect but get your views the right way he's like to me this is the right way so he just keeps putting new signs up and i just stopped caring honestly you were taking all of them down for at, at one point yeah there was a week a week and a half time span where i Pretty much took down every cardboard sign with the subscribe to this channel. Um, but I, I, I just stopped caring. If that's what he wants to do, he can generate subscribers that way. I was really hoping it would result in a diss track. At some point. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what I was hoping for. But, you know, beyond that, like I at the same like like I said, I feel like it's kind of trashy to do that but at the same time like i kind of respect the hustle like it's not that different than the early 2000s i was at a mall and there was this guy walking around with a walkman most mm. people out there listening who probably don't even remember what a walkman is yeah but and he was like going up to people and he's like hey will you listen to will you listen to this in, in my headphones and it was his own mixtape and then after you listen to it he tried to sell you his mixtape for a dollar and I was like, you know what? Like, I, I get that some people are going to be annoyed by it, but I respect him putting himself out there like that. Mm -hmm. It's kind of weird. Like, I it, I feel kind of conflicted on it. You know, things like that happen, and either you have to, you can take the standpoint of, hey, I'm going to help this young man out, or it's going to cause you to have a jaded view. So for me, what stems from all this is, just like you, I was in a shopping mall, um, or I was in a shopping mall parking lot. I parked my car walking into the mall. I see two um, two young guys out there, and uh, I, I they had a bat. Uh, sorry, a box out there. I assume assume they were selling some kind of chocolates or something. So you know, me being the the uh, chocolate connoisseur I am, I was ready to you know purchase a few chocolate bars. 
But th- it wasn't chocolate bars. It was music. They were selling music. And I'm like, uh, what kind of music is it? They're like rap. I'm like, uh, are there lyrics to it? I- I'm not a big fan of music with lyrics, or especially rap music. But I'm like, you know what? You guys are young. I'm going to help you out. So I paid. It was $5 for the CD. But I, sli- I slid him a 20 And I got the CD. And I went home. I'm like, you know what? I paid 20 bucks for this thing. I might as well just listen to it. It's a blank CDR. <laughs> Ow, dude. So these guys are out there selling $5 CDRs, pretending like it's, ra- it's their mixtape. <laughs> so this is the kind of stuff that causes me to get a jaded view on, on, on people like, that do stuff like that. No, I'm with you, though. As far as putting up signs, there was some local rapper who printed up. They looked semi-professional, but they were flyers, and they they had some kind of adhesive on them. And I guess he gave them to all of his friends. Either that, or he went around the entire Orlando area in one day and just like <laughs> carpet bombed. Every, <laughs> because it was like every telephone pole in my city of Ocoa here, which is right outside of Orlando, every telephone pole had one on it. And you couldn't take them off. I don't know what was on it, but like if you ripped it off, it stuck to the pole. Wow. So yeah, like you could rip off the sides, but like the middle would stick to it. So like I always remember that guy as the the idiot who carpet bombed an entire city with flyers for his (laughs) upcoming rap show. He must be in collaboration with 3M. He must. I have no idea, man. It's it's the weirdest thing. Like, but it it happens with other stuff too. Like, somebody in my city lost a dog recently, and like I said, every telephone pole had a flyer on it. And I'm like, oh, God, I gotta feel bad, but I think that dog's gone, dude. You've been looking yeah. for it for a month. It's gone. <laughs> then the next week, somebody finds a dog but doesn't know who owns it because all the signs are gone. Right. And well, sudden, you know, all of a sudden, the local Chinese. Food place has a special limited time only. Never mind. <laughs> you know, if you microchip the damn dog, then you don't have to put up the signs because someone would be able to find. Well, it. listen, not everybody has the millions you have to microchip their freaking dog. Yeah, and a lot of people find it to be unethical. It's not that expensive. Well, what about the dog's privacy? You know, like, I mean, it has rights, right? Yeah. Maybe the dog doesn't want to doesn't want you to know whose butt Legit- it's going and sniffing. Legitimately, a lot of people are finding it to be unethical. I mean, Chris shared an article with me today uh, with NBA owners uh, finding it to be offensive for mm-hmm. NBA owners to actually call themselves owners because it, it, uh, it that that pisses me off so much that I can't even breathe. They own the damn team. By definition, they are owners. Right, but people are saying, uh, not people, I think Adam Silver or whatever the uh, NBA commissioner is. Snowflake Silver. He said that calling owners owners uh, provides um, a negative connotation, like going back to slavery times. Oh, Jesus. Somebody get Jax out of the NBA. And then um, Draymond Green is an idiot. He says, oh, it's a bad, such a bad precedent to own somebody. They don't own you, you freaking moron. They own the rights to you playing on their team because you signed a goddamn contract with them. I was going to say, technically they own the contract, right? Yeah. You signed a contract with them. Yeah, I think... freaking idiot. I think, um... Everyone needs to just chill out. Uh, every, everything is so offensive to everybody these days. Um, and I can I, I totally see why the NBA commissioner did that. But really? So now it has to be governor. It doesn't even make sense. Yeah. So Go- they're, Why they're, are you a governor? They're not NBA owners anymore. They're NBA governors. I don't, Alex, have you heard of that or no? I have. And I guess I get both sides. So, I mean, if I owned a team or an organization, I would want to be known as the owner. But hear me out on this. When you own, a, like, a corporation, you don't call yourself the owner. You usually call yourself the chairman or the CEO. So it's kind of interesting. Like, Steve Ballmer is totally ahead of the curve on this. He's always listed himself as the chairman of the L.A. Clippers. 
which I think is probably hmm. a better way to approach it than saying owner, especially considering like let's be real. Like I think it's like 96% of the league is African American. Probably not a good idea to run around as a white guy saying you're the owner of the team. I will say that calling yourself governor is kind of funny because in the UK oh, it was used by the poor class to refer to people from a rich class. So it's really, not really that different. Yeah, it's like that's not really well, the where best you, term to replace it with, but okay. Well, where do you draw the line though? I mean, there's a lot of black players in the NFL. Are we gonna have to call them governors? I mean, you know. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. Honestly, I mean I you literally this... you it's it's literally a fact. You own the team and you can't even say that. You yeah. own the damn team. But Chris, I by think, definition. I think this is all a cascading um series of events that you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's stemming from the original incident with Donald Sterling, where uh if you remember he told his I think she was black. He told his black girlfriend, or no, no, she's half, uh, that's right. She's half Hispanic, half black. And he was on a recorded conversation telling her to stop bringing black people to, to the games. Well, he's banned for life. He's banned for life. But I'm just saying the NBA Which I is... didn't really have a problem with because I thought that was an effed up thing to say. Uh, but Absolutely it was. But... I think that they're still expounding on that and continuing to make changes, uh, probably good changes, because like Alex said, um, that's really the main demographic. In no, the- I get it, but you literally own the team, and 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 no, I've never heard an owner come out and say I own my players or anything ne- anywhere near that. That is even an issue. I yeah. mean, I you know. Hey man, this Jeannie, is new. This is new to Jeannie me too. Buss or Janine Buss doesn't own LeBron James. She owns his contract that he is obligated to play there. I mean, and he doesn't even have to play. He could say, "I'm never playing again." Void my contract or buy me out, or you know. Yeah. So they he, he, they have an association of players, a union. I mean, the player. It's the most absurd thing I've ever heard. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's the most absurd thing you've ever heard. No, it's definitely, it's definitely. I mean, I've heard some pretty absurd stuff. But I mean, it's not like the player. I mean, I mean, in a slavery comparison, I mean, I get that, and I'm sensitive to slavery. I think it was a horrible thing, so I don't want to come across as some white guy telling black guys how to feel, but. But, I mean, slaves had no recourse. These players have plenty of recourse if they're not happy. You're right. They have a players association. They obviously get paid millions of dollars. And and, and if you're that pissed, you say, I'm not showing up. Buy me out. Trade me. Until then, I'm sitting at home. Now, they can fine you for that. But I, I think if LeBron James was at that point, with the millions he's already made and he seems financially responsible, I, I don't think he'd really care if they find him the 5000 a day or Here's whatever. Here's the thing. Here's the bottom line. You and I can argue semantics, owner, governor, but what the NBA is doing is doing the best thing that they can for their own organization. So if at the end of the day, and I hate when people say if at the end of the day because one of my former supervisors uses that term a lot and I hated her, um, but at the end of the day, if it causes people to be a little bit more comfortable and at ease with what's going on, is just switching up the terminology and the vernacular, I'm all for it. But leave, leave it to each team. Because maybe, you know, it, it's like when the federal government says all states need to do that. Well, let the states decide what's best for them. Because not every state or not every team, you know... It, Maybe some teams have always called their owner owner, and they're happy with it. They're fine with it. Yeah. If there's a team that has a problem with it, and and they feel that way, then let the then let the higher ups meet with the players and say, okay, then I'll be the chairman. Or, but don't say, oh, we must call them governors. We need to move away. You know, that's where my issue comes in. And we're so 
somebody's offended by anything you say anymore. And I think that's why people came up with the term snowflake. Because everybody is offended by everything. Yeah. And, you know, somebody's offended that we called the players black because that's, you know, it's not PC. We should say African-American. Then people are offended you say African-American because it's overly PC. You know, you can never make everybody happy. Yeah, well, yeah. it's just like the ongoing evolution of linguistics in our country. But, I, you know, when it comes to... <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I want to compare NBA teams to states versus federal government because that's a totally different discussion. No, I, I get I, that. I, I didn't mean to do that. I'm just saying it's the same type of thing. I don't know, man. Like, if it makes the players happier, I I just change it and move on. I, I don't really think it's that big of a deal. But at the same time, I kind of get the other side of it. You know, why is that word triggering people so much? Because I, I think right now, I might get a little heat for saying this, but I think we're pretty far from the slavery days as a society. Like, we've come a long way from we have. that. Yeah. yeah. Careful, I'm still catching flack about the, uh, about the Mortal Kombat thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we did a yeah. podcast a few weeks ago. Uh, Sergeant Kicker caught some heat for it. I'm still catching I didn't, for it. I it didn't think you. Me. I didn't Everybody think was. you'd get heat about it. Was was it where you were talking about what was it that you were talking about? Lemon with the, the oh, it the was Jack's that. ending where he goes back and abolishes slavery before it starts. That's kind of a cool ending, though. It would be if it wasn't in a Mortal Kombat game. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your politics out of my violence. <laughs> <laughs> i just i just go like wow it's world combat it's like a sci-fi universe like hey that's kind of cool sergeant ass kickers like keep your politics out of my game junior well, get off my grass it's like when you're watching a tv I show it's like it's like when you're watching a tv show and they and they inject uh anti-trump comment you know even if you even if you're not a big fan of Trump or you're on the fa- you don't, you know, let me escape and just veg out and watch a damn TV show without telling me that the president is a racist or a bigot or a sexist or this or that. Just let me watch a TV show and laugh or see a criminal get taken down or whatever the hell it is without some political diatribe thrown at me. Yeah, it's hard to avoid nowadays. I oh, like every Chris watches like pit bulls and parolees and laughs at people when they get fired. <laughs> he does. <laughs> so, yeah. No, I watch. Uh, I watch Homicide Hunter. Though. Chris That's is a good the show. Chris is the angry old guy that attends every single town hall meeting. I don't know why you keep saying that. Because I'm nothing like that guy, dude. Yes, you are. You sound exactly like that guy, bro. Chris watches CSI and roots for the murderer. <laughs> I hope they don't catch him. I know, right? <laughs> no, C- CSI is not that realistic. <laughs> really? Are we going to go on realism in TV now? <laughs> <laughs> it's sci-fi, dude. But um, no, let's let's uh, wrap up this podcast. I want to say a uh, quick thanks to uh, Sarge and Chris, but most importantly, Purple Swordfish. It's been a pleasure having you on this podcast. Um, real quick. Yeah, we'll have to have you back. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I was about to say that too. Thank you, Chris. But real quick, tell us, tell the viewers, uh, all thirty-eight of them that watch us, uh, what it is you're doing uh, right now on YouTube, as well as your other um, endeavors on YouTube. Well, so first, thanks for having me on. I appreciate that. And then, as far as what I'm working on right now, uh, you can go to two websites, and it'll give you everything that I'm working on. One, purpleswordfish.com. That'll take you to my YouTube channel. I do gameplay, vlogs, streams, all that. And then uh, you can go to deadchannelduo.com, and that will lead you right to my podcast, the DCD podcast that I do with uh, Andy or ATH or Andy Holsey, whatever you know him by. So if you want to check those out, go to those two websites. I appreciate it. And And, uh, again, thanks, guys, for having me on. 
Yeah, no, yeah, it, so, it was yeah. a pleasure having you on. And and for the people listening, both of those links you just mentioned will be in the description. So it's going to be as easy as just clicking on them and you'll be transported right there. Um, as always, we thank you for listening and for uh, the support. Uh, bear with us when we take our breaks like that, one or two weeks here and there. We're trying our best here. Uh, it's a very low production, but we're, we're doing our best. So until next time, this is Sarge, Chris, myself, and Purple Swordfish checking out. We will see you next week.